Okay, and hello again, and uh, hello for the first time to those watching online. We have a little bit of a live viewership for these sessions as well, which is which is always a, a fun time. Um, this is actually session two of two for this year's uh, musical uh, T series. Thank you, Lester. And we've been doing these sessions actually now, going on nine years, if you can believe it. Yeah, wow. it's been it's been. I think we might even be. Are we longer than that? We might be longer than that. Yeah. Yeah, so we used to do this uh, music and tea in the court, it was called. Nice. And we would have a bunch of musicians uh, that would all play on the same day. And we would just uh, line like up a, a whole festival. bunch of chairs, like a festival, yeah. Wow. And then during COVID, we turned to doing um, smaller groups you know, at tables. Yeah. Um, on every Friday we were doing it for, nice. for a year. And then we started doing it once a month. And now we're at, you know, twice a year, but that's okay. And that's why <laughs> we're still saying because of that <laughs> <those> se <laughs> session. Se you you know, Change knowing. the vibe of the world just by doing that. Exactly, exactly. And um, for those watching, I'm I'm Jared Nyberg. I'm one of the owners of Jaga Silk, and we're a tea uh, matcha specialty company. But we like to you dabble all in all kinds. sorts of uh, of, uh, of teas and and culture. Um, and with me today, I have Lester Quitzel. 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 Okay, there you go. I'm, I'm loving the uh, the miming here. This is, yeah, uh, exactly. Can you just introduce yourself that way? I do. Excellent. So, <laughs> excellent. Okay. And because uh, it's hard to say Danish Kvitsal. I would be how you'd say Kvitsal. Kvitsal. Is that Kvitsal. how you say it in Danish? Yeah. Kvitsal. Kvitsal. With the right pronunciation. Mine in Swedish is Nieber. Oh, yeah. Like that. Yeah, yeah, instead of Nyberg. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Anglicization thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, Grade one. That's <laughs> right. Trauma. Still with me. <laughs> I like being announced in T-ball, though. That, that was okay. That was nice. Okay. Um, you know, uh, but Lester, I am so stoked that you're here. I I I'm have to say, to be here too for a lot of reasons. You know, like I think that uh, when I put your albums on after Hello Wasp, um, no, you don't need to be young. It. Yeah, I know. I had one land on my glasses the other day. It's good to get such nice glasses. <laughs> it was it was it was stoked for the glasses. Um, but the the. Uh, you know, it's the the music that I've been playing at the tea bar that I've been right. really digging. Um, you know, I, I've been really liking. There's like a very like a gritty, soulful, very real and authentic sound that I'm 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 super stoked about. Uh, and it just works in our space. We vibe yeah. to it. It's great. I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> and then we were actually introduced to you by Peaches and Quiet. I think uh, mm -hmm. they were the ones that were suggested we reach out to you. And yeah. and I wasn't sure you'd reach out to us because I don't know how if you guys know this, but Lester. A Juno Award, which is pretty, pretty cool. I don't know. I just had this image that if you're like, you know, maybe I'm I just like tea more than anything. I know, that's what I. That's what <laughs> I found out play, after the fact. Any place has got real tea. So and this tea is. You, you know, tea. and I, it, to talk about tea, like I have no. I live on a small island. Nobody gets the tea thing. I, I learned this afterwards. So yeah. when, when you were like, you were like, yeah, I'd love to. I'm like, really? Really? And then you're like, yeah. And I'm like, and you came down and you hung out and you. You know, you know, does anybody know what pu'er is? Pu'er. Yeah. Pu'er. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, it's a it's a fermented aged tea. Um, it, awesome. it, you know, Camellia sinensis itself. You, um, it's it's responsible for all the different tea genres that we'll be drinking today: the greens, the oolongs, the crimsons, the dark teas, or the true blacks. Mm -hmm. And it's all a question of enzymatic oxidation that. Uh, kind of decides where you're at. It's like the difference between a red and a white wine. But a lot of people think it's all just different plants, but it's actually just how you interact process. and process. Yeah. And it's a, it's a balance of passive and active oxidation. And it's a particular kind of oxidation called enzymatic oxidation and the control over a, an enzyme called polyphenol oxidase. And that kind of gets you your basic sort of space for entering these different genres. But Lester, um, and I both know uh, Daniel over at the Chinese tea shop, mm. and uh, got to slurp. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Lester, um, not only you know, it, it's a, he guy is, gets pu'er by the tongue, right? Tongue? Oh, I, that's my dream. Your dream? Okay. I almost did. I keep and, on. and my wife talked me out of it. <sighs> and it's like getting instead of getting a, a a quarter, it's getting a roll of quarters. Yeah. Okay. For, but in the world, so they're yeah, sold yeah, in, yeah. In, in, in in pucks or in cakes, we should call them. And I knew the market was going, and I said it would be the better investment than stocks and bonds, but it still didn't. 
didn't it didn't it didn't happen. You know, some Pua but, cakes these days are selling for hundreds of thousand dollars a uh, yeah. kilogram for the hundred fifty year old aged Pua's. Kind of makes me a little upset. <laughs> <laughs> I know it does take it out of the reach of the of the you know of people like the myself. musician <laughs> and and the tea merchant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's why you get into it so yeah. that you can drink the good stuff. We try, yeah. I know people with the good stuff. Yeah. I don't, I, you know, we, we, we focus on the matcha. I think I'm pretty proud of our matcha. Though. It's awesome. It's amazing. I get to experience more of it. But, um, we'll, we'll do it. Yeah. We'll do it. Maybe I'll we'll make you a shot after uh, mm -hmm. the show. It'll be good. Yeah. Um, but what we're drinking today is not matcha. This first tea that we're going to have for the, the session is actually, um, and that's your glass there, sir. Um, this is a selection from Bhutan. So we had the good fortune of being invited on a delegation to Bhutan that was specifically about tea. And we got to visit the Sam Choling Tea Cooperative that produced this very raw, complex tea. I mean, if you want to give it a smell, you can get some really... It's so subtle. It's what I love about tea. It's the subtle. You can go into it so... It's like a meditation for me. Mm -hmm. And it's... You know, I find that... It's not like walking into a pharmacy when you get hit by the smell of all the toxic uh, stuff. It's just so beautiful. Mm, agreed. And so you, you put your nose in there, you give it a swirl, take a little sip. Got a slurp. <laughs> and you, you can, yeah, you can slurp and you can get some of those, those uh, droplets back into your retro factory senses mm. there and get a nice uh, sense of those aromatics, flavors, texture. We've done a 72 hour cold infusion That's of this amazing. tea. That's amazing. And then we've, um, we've taken it and we've, we've put it into champagne bottles and then we pasteurized it so that it stays good out of the shell, uh, on the shelf for about a year. Right. Um, and we've done lots of experimentation. We found that if we fill the bottles using carbon dioxide to push the liquid through the lines, it actually has enough residual carbon dioxide that the uh, carbonic acid is carbon dioxide and that, that is an acid and it actually interferes with your ability to taste the finish and it destroys the nose. It, mm -hmm. the, the, these, these volatile oils in the tea are that mm -hmm. volatile that they're gone so easily. So this has been, we bottle cold in the bottle before we heat it so mm -hmm. that those, when those volatiles do um, blow out of mm -hmm. the liquid, because that's what you're smelling, volatile oils, um, they, they go back in after the bottle chills. So it's amazing. Yeah. And that's what I love about tea is the discernment, the refinement. It's, it's infinite as far as detail that you can get into to making the ultimate. Uh, there is no such thing as the ultimate. It just, it's amazing. It's, it's an ongoing journey, you know. It, it's I, as far as my Virgo OCD, all those tendencies. It's amazing. And in brewing. Virgos, I don't know that. Okay, there you go. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, Virgos yeah. just end up hanging together and just find <laughs> each other. Yeah. And then, then hopefully we don't bore the world with uh, all our <laughs> obsession to detail. Amazing. Yeah, okay, cool. You know, actually, I was watching your setup with the music, and I don't know about you, but um, I feel like the, the, the textures, flavors in a tea, and I've mentioned this before at different musical tea sessions, but to me, there's a, there's a very um, direct parallel between when I'm trying to find mid, low, and high frequency sounds, yeah. balancing on a mixer, trying to get the sounds to work. And I noticed your setup was really interesting. You had, you have um, like different microphones, like say you have your guitar, you're plugged in through a quarter inch cable, but you're also running um, this microphone to capture maybe the sound of the, the hands. The natural uh, sound. Uh, touching the strings, analog. And that yeah. analog sound. That's really so. You're you're not just plugging in your guitar. You're you're combining that yeah. with the this 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 texture. So you can hear that in the ears, right? Like there's all the details. Yeah, that's super. That's what I love about brewing tea. I, I also see it as frequencies. Yeah, right? right. So you got these little teapots, and I run it through a different teapot, and it's like running it through a different piece of gear or. There's this window of opportunity when you're bro brewing a tea and a point where it gets bitter. Mm -hmm. and it's like making those old cassettes, right? Or, 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 or like a recording where the meters, you just get it in the red and get the max out. And if you go too far, then it's bitter. So Yeah, you know. and it gets a little bit of abrasive, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, and I think that happens with flavor too, for sure. Yeah, exactly. And you can also go the other way around where you're like, you're so careful 
that it's like a, it's like a white bloom cheese where there's nothing there. It's just all soft yeah, and neutral, yeah. and there's no, yeah. there's no bitterness. There's yeah. no, uh, uh, there's no aggressiveness at all, right. and so you don't really have any identity. Yes. And I think uh, with sound, if you can get it just where it's just maybe it's a little uncomfortable, that actually gives it right, right, gives just it some edge. some. You like that? I really do like that. Just nice. I love doing that with the tea. Like, you know, we could pull some punches with the tea that you're having right now, and we could make it so that you don't get any of those bitter notes. There's a little bit of bitters in there, right? Oh, absolutely. That's yeah. what, but I was going to say that's really good to get out because just have bitterness in that. And right. So, you know, the stones that you've got enough to be on the and, and, and they call that flavor structure, right? In the wine yeah. industry, they talk about this a lot, right. too. I think this exists in sound, sound structure, oh, yeah. where we're, we're, we're trying to, like, if we have uh, too much of one or the other, we, we fall into imbalance. and. And life seems to be this perma search for finding balance, but then you can be too balanced. So <laughs> yeah, then it's kind of boring. Yeah, and so then you got to go and push the envelope again, right? And it's, yeah. that's why it's a journey, and there's never a finish line. And everybody brews a cup of tea different, or everyone sings a song. The tea is like the song to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. You would brew that that cup of tea, and it would be the same tea. It could use all the same instruments, yeah. and it would be different. Yeah. And it's the same with the song. We could, you could play a song, we could play the same song, and all the same instrument, everything, and it would be different. So that's what I love about it. It's good, yeah. The the, the sound, the the flavors, yeah. It's vibration. Good. Everything's vibration. <laughs> how long have you been doing this? The the, the sound piece, and then how long you been into the tea piece? Thirty five years playing music, and about ten, twelve, fifteen. 12 or 13 years, 15 years probably, being obsessed with tea. It was a journey that started with just realizing there's different whoop, different teas, and but it all came from a similar plant, yeah. and then how to brew it, and then it just become, it headed down this road, and now it's a spiritual thing for me. I connect with the energy of the tea, yeah. like old growth forest tea comes can come from old growth 500 year old trees. I mean, you drink that tea. Afterwards, you feel you feel the energy of that, and you feel I get, I I can't wait to get up in the morning and have tea, right. and it sets my day. Nice. Certain teas I look for something, and then certain teas I'm just open to exploring, letting them kind of you know, find out what they are and how to brew it, get the most out of that tea, what it has to offer. It's, it's amazing. This was a really hard tea for me. Because it's from a beautiful environment. It's uh, about 2,000 meters above sea level. Right. Um, it's a brilliant tea garden, uh, just absolutely gorgeous. But they're doing land race cultivars, so they're not they're not cutting uh, and, and cutting cuttings and, and planting those to do genetic um, copies as they go yeah. forward. They're doing they're doing land race where they're it's dropping seed. And that's growing the plants, and then they're 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 just moving those throughout the garden and propagating using seed. And so you have this wildness to harvest times. And when you process, you have mad variations in leaf size. Yeah, because uh, everyone's a character; they're yeah. not clones. But they're harvesting them all together and they're processing right. them all together. So there's this. So it's hard to to, to brew it. Or every, every, to every, it. every batch is different. different. So right. you know, we will give you settings for this one batch, and it's very links right into what we're talking about yeah. but also on just this farm level if when i get this tea and i have another 10 kilograms arriving soon um that will be very different from what i have right now and this one when i was making it i could smell it taste it, it smelled so good but when i would make it that bitter note was just overwhelming right but um when i brewed it hot i did something i don't normally do with a green which is i i i had some advice uh from an ally in the industry to just try a rinse I rinse my yeah, pueres yeah. and I rinse my, yeah. my crimson teas, but I rarely rinse my greens. Yeah. And I, I, I did, and it made all the difference in the world. Suddenly I had that umami, that beautiful sweet vegetal uh, flavor dynamic. Like it was, it was really complex and beautiful. And it's just turned out so nice. This is the first time yeah. I've cold brewed it. And well, that's the thing, you gotta yeah. approach everything differently. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every tea, yeah. find out what does this tea have to offer and how do I get the most out of that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh, hey, <laughs> can you talk to us a little bit about uh, what you're uh, performing today and, and, and the instruments you brought and, and, and what we can look some, forward to? Some electric guitars, a dobro guitar made in Saskatchewan, run it through a 
old tube amplifier and um, just going to play, see where the music wants to go. It's kind of like different every time. That's what makes it exciting. You know? Cool. Different setting. I'm going to try not to, my, my, my goal is to just stay out of the way. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah, no, fair. So, yeah, it's been a lot of years trying, 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 and now just letting go. That's kind of where it's at for me. Very cool. Okay. Well, very excited to hear it. Um, did we have any questions from the audience for Lester? A lot of questions. Pender. So just far enough away to get lost in traffic and stuff. Are you guys here mostly for for tea or, or music? <laughs> What's that? Let's not make this like a personal yeah, yeah. type of thing. Let's do a few offer. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And amazing. And 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 then you after today's session, I guess you'll be Going back to some fig harvesting and some apples. Yeah, and yeah we're so, we farm and, and grow our own food, so there's just so much work to do. It's nice to put on my city clothes and, and, and do my th music thing, and then we go back to the figs, figs, figs yeah. everywhere. And so uh, it's great that there's a fig dessert today. That's amazing. Well, if you, if you like what you hear today, you can go home and you can buy some local figs, hopefully. You can play Lester's albums, many of them, on. Uh, on Spotify, I found them. Apple Music, I guess we can oh, yeah. buy some from you today. Hopefully, I got some, some CDs. And and yeah. Okay. So they were good for lot, lot scaring away birds too. <laughs> the CDs from yeah. the figs. They yeah. Put the CDs up there. Amazing. The birds don't eat your figs. It's multifaceted. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Just like this. Awesome. <laughs> okay. A any other questions before we head into it? Okay. Ready to rock. I think we're ready to. I think we're ready for it. Okay. I'm gonna move the table out of the way and then. And and big hands for Lester.
version of Amazing Grace. How are we doing? Sounds Out good. there in, uh, in the digital world? We got analog going on here. I love it. This is an old Taj, Taj Mahal. Yeah. 
my soul Loving rocket to my soul She loved me to my soul Loving rocket to my soul you don't get when you're streaming. <laughs> That's right. You gotta come out for the real thing. That's right. I'll tell you. We have some people watching from the Okanagan. Oh, oh cool. The fix would be finished out there. It's so hot. Whoa. So, uh... Mm. old blues songs they um there's a poetry to them so they're not all they're singing about things that uh there's more way more to them so they often sing about relationships and but really they're singing about their oppressor from 100 years ago um, and so i dug up this old blues tune it's about 100 years old it's called World Gone Wrong by the Mississippi Sheiks. And the, the words, the dude is basically saying, all these things out of my control, I can no longer be good no more. So all these things outside of himself. He's singing about the relationship with his wife. It could be all kinds of things. But the, the thing that blows me away is, it's no different. The times a hundred years ago, people were in a similar place than where we're at, I would think. It seems it's kind of dark, but... And you listen to the folk songs, and that'll tell you what's really was going on in the times, because it's the people singing from their heart. It's not the guy that writes history, the people with money, the corporations or whatever 
It's about the people. This song has that poetry in it. Strange things have happened like never before. My baby told me I'd have to go. I can't be good no more. Once like I did before. I can't be good, baby. This morning ain't got no home, no use in worrying, cause the world's gone wrong. I can't be good no more. Once like I did before, I can't be good, baby. Tried to be good now and treat you kind. Seems like it's never right. You got no love in mind. I can't be good no more. Once like I did before. I can't be good, baby. They don't treat you kind, no. Pray to the good Lord to get them out of your mind. I can't be good no more. Once like I did before. I can't be good, baby. Said when you've been good now, can't do no more. Just tell them kindly, there is the front door. I can't be good no more. Once like I did before, I can't be good, baby. Pack up my suitcase, bring me my head, no use in asking me cause I ain't never coming back, I can't be good no more, once like I did before, I can't be good baby. I can be good, baby. Dylan did a version of that from, uh, what, what was his record called? World Gone Wrong, 1990. <laughs> ah.
I was always ahead this time. This is a, a tune I wrote for my grandfather who lived to be 99. And he remembered the first vehicle, the first car come down the road, all the changes that, that, that he saw. And uh, it took him about 95 years to soften up a little bit. It was nice to see.
Thank you. Yeah, man. Okay. All right. Different one? Different one. Whoa. I know. We got a flight coming. So, yeah, well, hopefully people won't uh, fly too far away. Oh. Okay. Oh, the tea's <laughs> taking us. You notice how you feel from that first one? <laughs> Just a little bit different. <laughs> it changed right. everything. <laughs> This one's going to take it to another level. That's the one. So we just, we actually, we just had a, a green tea. So again, the green tea, the Umboja, as the Bhutanese call that particular selection, um, again, from those land-raised cultivars. The one I'm going to serve you next is actually a very famous cultivar from Phoenix Mountain in China. And this one is called the Milan Xiang, which I'm sure you're, Milan Xiang. Which I'm sure you're familiar with. I um, am. Yeah, and this is a young farmer, Mr. Chen, um, took over the farm in his 30s. And he is, uh, he's doing a really good job. He sent us some really interesting teas. Uh, the Yashishang in particular was a cultivar that he charcoal roasted with different um, roast temperatures. And we got to trial different uh, versions of the same tea, uh, prepared a little bit differently. Very small batches, took over from his parents about five, six years ago now. And he's just doing an awesome job. So I really hope you like this, the aromatics on this. You can really taste the Maillard in that charcoal roast, that kind of toasted sugar, mm. the honey, the orchid. It's really something else. So hope you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoyed that local fig uh, inside of our roll cake there. And uh, we'll get back to Lester. Right now? Keep going, or we take yeah, a little please break? Keep, please keep going. Then. Okay. Yeah, and then we'll take a break after the next one. Okay. Sounds. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I better wait. I got to play, so I, I get to try it, right? No, I really can just go as they go. Oh, we're all going to go. This was nice and dark. Oh, yeah. Woo! Those floral, the floral top notes. different, isn't it? Sweet. Mm -hmm. Makes a mouth. All, all these beautiful things happen in, in the mouth. Really, really nice. It's a good color too. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Tell me that I had no more. Damn old walking blue. 
could tell me that I had them on. Some people say don't worry That the worry blues ain't bad That's the worst old feel I've ever had People say don't worry So my tea journey led me to read this ancient Chinese poet called Cold Mountain. Yeah, sure. Uh, actually, more tea would be better. But I, I do need water. So, I do. so Cold Mountain. Oh, watch the, watch the gear. On the gear. It's all good. Cold Mountain. So it's five, oh, ancient, 500 years. About the same age as some of the teas I'm drinking. <laughs> Cold Mountain was a, he got to be famous amongst the 60s uh, beatnik poet, poets. His real name was Han Shan. And they'd live up in the mountains and write poetry and live a hermit kind of practicing Buddhist life up in the, up in the hills. So all his poems have been uh, translated and this is one of them. It's called dust. And dust refers to the busyness of life, dust, all the things that distract us. And uh, the words go like this because you might not understand them later. So it goes dust. 
This life is lost in dust. We're like bugs, bugs in a bowl, unable to get out. And this, we're like bugs in a bowl, unable to get out. But that bird, he threw me off. Dust. Uh, he'll, bring, he'll, he'll, he'll bring it to me. Dust. This life is lost in dust. We're like bugs. Bugs in a bowl. Trying to get out. And the sorrow, we're nothing like the gods, that's it. We're nothing like the gods, nothing. And the sorrow never ends, ever. And the months and years flow by like water. And then, all of a sudden, we're old. The end. <laughs> and then he goes on, enjoy your time. We haven't very long. We were born just a moment ago. In another moment, we'll be gone. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you. Dust. I had troubles with this little electronic device that wasn't working. I make plans, but nothing goes according to plans. But we're going to take a break, just a break. And I'm going to get out of the sun and have some figs. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be back.
twice. Oh yeah, we could totally do it. That's that's the answer right there. <laughs> um, Lester, can you give me the lights, please? <laughs> Thank you. Done. Okay, lights have been dimmed. Um, okay, so welcome back to uh, part two of our musical tea series. Uh, we're actually looking at. Uh, not sure yet. This isn't. This isn't confirmed, but it's pretty close. As we may be having a really lovely. Um, fellow who tours with Jordi Saval uh, joining us next year in May for our next one. So I don't know if anybody knows Jordi Saval, but he's an early music uh, musician that we, you and I are big groupies and we go follow uh, him and go all around the world and we love his work. And we're really excited about that. We kind of have this very borderline, I don't know, you should see the compilations that we would make when we were growing up. Yeah. We would have like, like Bach and on there with uh, with Limp Biscuit and stuff, so yeah, I was <laughs> pretty, <laughs> pretty wild. Yeah, I think I met Mew, and Mew liked the Marilyn Manson and the Backstreet Boys when I met her. <laughs> I thought it was so wild how like extremely opposite those were. Um, anyway, uh, this is back when we were 17 and 18, but I'm going way too too far back now. Anyway, enough of that. I'm going to talk to you about this Bhutanese Zangja. So this is a uh, uh, the same co-op as the the green tea that you guys had at the beginning, I, I was kind of humming and hawing, should I serve this before the Milan Xiang? The Milan Xiang is a completely different farm, completely different style. This is back to those Landrace cultivars. Uh, this is definitely a, a lighter flavor, um, but you get some really interesting notes of caramel. There's, some, uh, there's, a, there's a beautiful um, uh, background, almost like rose-like nose. And again, the difference between a, a green tea and an oolong, which is often referred to as a blue tea when we're talking about the color genre of different teas, um, or say a crimson tea, which in North America we call black tea. Really the difference is your, your um, control over that enzyme, that, that PPO enzyme I was mentioning before. So this is letting the leaves wither or brown. You know like when you, when you cut some grass and you just leave them in a pile, they'll get brown? That's essentially what withering means. You harvest these leaves, and that PPO enzyme is uh, what's responsible for browning the, the, the leaves. So th then, when they when they're when they're ready, generally about you know they'll take it until it loses about ooh, at least twenty percent of its moisture on raised beds, and then they'll uh, take it into a, a crushing unit. Or oh, it comes sometimes done by hand. Some really beautiful stuff is done by hand. But they'll uh, they'll crush the leaves and massage them and, and bring out some really interesting transformations in the leaf through this this very active oxidative process, and then they're going to um, put it in a fermentation room where it's, it's it has controlled humidity and, and temperature etc. In the more high tech in, uh, producers, the low tech producers is just going to choose the right ambient environment, the right time to process their teas, and they're going to leave a lot to nature to be able to. Uh, move forward with these processes. And then when the tea is done, and say if you were in say the Darjeeling region and you're making tea there, oftentimes they're gonna wait for the smell of green apples and they know that it's ready to go to a process called kill green. And kill green is when you deactivate that enzyme through a heat that's over 85 degrees centigrade. That's gonna deactivate the, 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 the PPO enzyme. And then if you let it go uh, pretty far in terms of browning it before you take it to that stage, again, we're talking about at least 80% for your lighter crimsons, um, then yeah, you're in the world of crimson tea. If you deactivate that enzyme within 23 hours of harvest and you don't let it really do much at all, you're in the world of green tea. And oolong is in between those two. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're gonna be tasting, a, this is basically a deeply enzymatically oxidized tea, otherwise known as black tea in North America. <laughs> All right, so this is gonna be a zangja, is what they call it. It literally means premium leaf. I don't know if anybody out here has ever had a maofeng, but it's the Bhutanese word for maofeng is zangja. Ja means tea in Bhutan. So we've had the ngoja, that was the first one we had. Uh, the, then this one is gonna be the zangja. Um, and we had the milan shang before this from a completely different farm. And after this, we're going to be having an oak ash fermentation of a um, of a dark tea from Bhutan. Which we're pretty stoked about, which I think Lester had. I know he was at the tea mm -hmm. bar the other day. Very, yeah. very, very amazing. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so I'm going to pour this, and I'm going to hand the the sound back to our our amazing I musician guest, Mr. Yeah. There it is. There it is. What was it in in the, the the in Dutch again? Was it Dutch? Danish. Danish. 
So pizza. Pizza. Okay. I really like this. This is good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you. I wonder what they would have said when you were playing t-ball. What's that? If you'd played t-ball as a kid, would they have murdered your name like they did mine? Oh, probably. I don't know. A, a time for when when the cycle of life continues. Yeah. Exactly. We'll find out, baby. Sorry. You ain't seen nothing like that. Your name murdered. I believe you, Mark. Yes. <laughs> do this tune for the whales. It's a Charles Mingus tune called Goodbye, Pork Pie. It's made famous by Jeff Beck, my favorite guitar player. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you. Thank you. All right. farmers, uh, my wife and I, and uh, well, we grow farmers. We grow food. We have a food forest. There's food everywhere. And it's very stressful time of year trying to process it all, and uh, it all happens at once. And then company shows up. You should make them help you f pick figs, but it's a skill that you have to learn. And uh, same with blackberries, making guests <laughs> pick blackberries. It doesn't usually work very well because they want to come home with a big bucket. And if, if, if the berry just doesn't fall off, then it's too sour, right? right? Or if it's too mushy. And so we got containers in the freezer. Guests, the, the, the ones the guests have picked and the ones that we have picked through experience. It's like brewing tea. You have to, it takes a lifetime to learn these things. So where was I going with that? Buckets of rain, old Bob Dylan too. We get all excited when there's rain in the forecast. But this tune doesn't have anything to do with rain, really. Life is sad, 
life is a bust. All I can do is do what you must and do what you must do and do it well. I do it for you, honey, baby, can't you tell? Do it for you. so grateful to be here hanging out playing in the sun hope you're having a good time if anyone's listening out there in the streaming world the digital realm it's amazing <laughs> awesome wow serious tea place in Montreal good, good. yeah yeah, I had a few good experiences. There's a capo. There it is. What is mine? Everything changes when you put this thing on there. And then we have to tune because the guitar was in the sun. It takes time. There we go. And I'd like to thank Jared and, and Miu for this lovely tea that you've so well crafted. Amazing. All the different steps. The passion comes through. Like it. That's what I love about tea. Connection. You can connect with all the different levels of um, energy that brought this tea here, from the plant to the to the pickers to the processing. All that love and energy is such a. In Indian teas, it's more machine. More machine in, in machines involved. But Chinese teas. Yeah, you can get handmade Indian teas, definitely. Amazing. You should be brewing tea at home if you're listening, because it's, it's part of the deal, right? <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. Amazing.
its ground like a tiny head reaching up for the sun. Let us pray that our hearts are Toughest love is the strongest one, like a crippled man fights his bitter pain on two tired legs. Hope to walk once again. Stay gold and leave still. Thank you. Tapping into the subtle body there. I like it.
You guys doing all right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> getting there. Oh yeah, you're we getting. Got the, we got the ring there on us. <laughs> you're getting cooked. Oh, you can. Oh, it's yeah. always a good moment always a good for moment. tea. Okay, all right. okay. I didn't know we had more. I Just know, keep it coming. One. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> good timing. So this, I love the name of this one. They call it Ja Om. Oh, perfect. <laughs> it's, it's fitting, right? Ja Om. Yeah, ja Om. So Ja, of course, meaning tea. Um, this is an oak ash fermentation. So in the world of the, the, the tea world that we know, if we talk about green teas, we talk about crimson teas, we talk about oolong teas. And this is uh, what in North America we would call a dark tea, or what at origin would be referred to as a black tea. Uh, the, the English renamed red or crimson tea black tea, so it's made life really confusing for everybody. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is what we would call dark tea in North America. Uh, so like a Yunnan Hei Cha or like a, or like a yeah, Pua is a good example of a, a, a brilliant dark tea. Um, this one from Bhutan, though, they do uh, four hours of oak ash uh, boiling. So they put oak ash into the water, boil it uh, for four hours, then they dry it for three days, then they chop it, then they boil it again for four hours, and then dry it again for three days in piles. And you get this somewhat similar to, I guess, a uh, accelerated fermentation like you'd see in your right. your uh, your show puers or your ripe puers. And you get this really rich broth that's quite similar, but it's very alkaline because of that oak ash. And it gets uh, to a place where I think it's just really, really smooth. We weren't sure how this would come through in the cold extraction, mm. but it's just its just a very easy drinking uh, cold brew. If anybody wants to bring home a bottle today, by the way, I've been asked a lot of times today. Um, the, uh, the bottles are uh, normally, um, we charge anywhere from 16 to $20, depending on the tea we're using, um, but they're $15 when we do the musical tea series. So if you do want to bring a, a bottle back, just let me know at the end, okay? Um, but for now, I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the music. I'm gonna pour some out for everybody, and when you're drinking it, if you yeah, do that swirl, give it just a nice smell, check out the, the liqueur and liquor and color, and then give it a sip. Uh, I think you're gonna be in a really good place. Thank you so much. Back to Lester. Thank you. And the seagulls. Yeah. That's for the seagulls. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it's my new project. Yeah, that's right. Very temporal. What do you think? It's a good one. All the, all it's different, good. eh? They're all good. Yeah, well, they're all there, good. There you are. That's it. Whoa, that's dark. Yeah, isn't it? Nice. <laughs> mm. It's very brave of you guys to see what happens with the cold brew. <laughs> just to just, just check it out. Just, you know, yeah. often. Because you can miss out on some acidity if you're not careful, but yeah. But uh, I think the fruit and the florality just comes right out. It's just another expression of the tea. Yeah. Everything's an expression. Here's a day. Uh, it's an old Pete Seeker song called "Old Brown Earth."
and I have a plan. I didn't get to play this drum on the last tune. And my loop pedal didn't work. We'll give her a go this time.
Straight on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's it for uh, the music. One more? You guys got it? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Sounded amazing. Thank you. It's a thing called um, Crossroads. It's that blues poetry happening. It's just lots going on. Yeah. Thanks again for listening, being here.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Jared. Awesome. Had a good time. <laughs> well, thank you, Lester. Another big hand for Lester. <laughs> Amazing. Great job. So, uh, thank you all to you for coming out today. Uh, we do these sessions fairly uh, regularly. This is the last one of the year, though. So, stay tuned on our webpage, jagasilk.com, to check out uh, the the next sessions. <laughs> sessions. <laughs> and uh, we always like to switch things up, so it should be some interesting tunes. We go through early music and blues and indie rock and, and baroque and <laughs> it's all over. So uh, we have a we have a really good time, but we always we always pair it with some tea. So yeah, we're uh, you can come for the tea and, and or for the music unique. and stay for the tea or come for the tea and stay for the music or <laughs> whatever you wanna do. Um, I'm a little bit of both. I also am uh, a musician at heart. I have a show tomorrow, if anybody wants to check it out, Whoa. at the uh, Music and Art Festival at the um, Luch CP. My band's called Truth and Dolphin. And it'll be a, it's a lovely garden. Have you ever been to Glendale Garden? I have, a long time ago. Yeah, they're called yeah. the Horticul Horticultural Center of the Pacific now. Nice. So that they can uh, uh, connect with government funding for students to go and learn how to do their organic gardening there, which right. is pretty cool stuff and so they do a music and arts fundraiser festival every year nice. and this is our second year part of it so uh, as my other hat as truth and dolphin um but uh and uh, another hat that i have is uh, part of the non-profit uh, society called the international tea appreciation society and on october 28th the victoria tea festival revival um we have a board member here today <laughs> um is is uh we're gonna have our again, eighth or ninth or something like that, uh, annual. It took over for a festival that existed for seven years before it. And we have a whole bunch of tea companies setting up uh, farmer's market style tables. It's all about education. Down in the school, down the stairs, we set up a symposium. There's speakers, live feeds of farmers from around the world. Um, we have uh, special guests. We have the Japanese tea ceremony generally. Um, we have all sorts of fun stuff happening. There's gonna be a world tea championship too, focused on Gong Fucha, which should be fun. Uh, we're trying to get, organize and get together a little um, Yixing teapot sort of art gallery. Mm. Um, uh, and we, we're trying to work with the cosplay community to do uh, photos with Alice in Wonderland and having tea. So yeah, lots of, it's a very ex, uh, eclectic tea festival that I encourage you to come out to. So that's gonna be October 28th from 12 to five. Um, and uh, thank you, Lester, I'll for a, a brilliant performance. And I'm thank sure you. we'll uh, connect more over the next while. Uh, and I uh, love having you come to the bar. If you come on Fridays to Jack Silk, we're open 12 to 4, one day a week for the public. Otherwise, we're a wholesale company. We do tea clinics in the mornings on Fridays, though, that you can check out. Sometimes you'll see Lester at our bar uh, enjoying some matcha some, yeah. and some different uh, teas that we do. So thank you so much. And another. <laughs>